I don't know why this is backwards over here. This is backwards? Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay, so. Well, yeah, look. I don't know how to fix that. I know, because look at the difference over there. Hey, folks, we're live. Lester and Jamie here. Happy Sunday. Uh, thank you all for joining us on a gorgeous sunset happening right here behind us. Oh, there's the sun. They can see the sun without you having to move. I'm just noticing how different the video quality looks on the two different platforms. I'm not going to say which is better. I am not going to open my mouth. Okay. I will not open my mouth about either one, but we are coming to you live on two platforms, both Facebook and YouTube on two different devices, because that's where we're at. Okay. Which is the one that will do things? Oh, that one over there. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. I love that. Uh, anyway, thank you all for joining us. We've had quite the eventful day. Talk about the baby shower. Because oh, I know. So Hold sweet. on. The tale of two cities. Is that the right expression? Because what you're going to say, oh, how sweet. And all the ooing and the awing that the ladies were putting on. Is not how it was perceived from the guys that had to be Lester's there. It was first baby shower, okay? It was his first baby shower, first couple shower. And as a woman, if you go, you eat, you play a game, you ooh and ah over the baby gifts that are open, and you shower the mom. Well, now it's a couple's event, and the men don't get it. Wait, who's, who made it a couple's event? Who made that rule? Like, where did that come from? Because Rob wasn't there. Laramie wasn't there. Tell me, tell me some others. There were not all couples there. Why would I, how did I get roped into that? Oh, it's a couples event now. Baby showers are meant for women. They're meant for women because there's not a man on this page who would go. Hold on. I'm just going to give you an example. Without having anything in front of me. I'm going to hold up this onesie, and there could be a whole chorus of, oh, and those guys are like, and then you put that one, hold on, you don't just set it down, it's folded, and then you pick up the second onesie, and all the women, oh, and those guys are like saying like, I'm sitting here counting packages. I'm like, there's like 30 bags. And each bag has multiple onesies. And then diapers. Oh, who's going to ooh and all over diapers? Women do. Women ooh and all over diapers. This is, <laughs> this is dirty. Let me clean it. You just keep everybody entertained while I clean. Move, Listen. Trixie. Move, sweetie. All you had to do was sit there and enjoy the food and enjoy the company, enjoy the beautiful weather. That's it. It was outside. It wasn't like anybody asked him to, like, I don't know, hold anything, do anything, no physical labor. Ho, 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 ho. Who cleaned the cooler? Christmas, baby. We're having a lot. We're in a live video. Christmas. Oh, Lord. Who cleaned the cooler before we ever left the house? Get down, sweetie. I love you. Get down. Who cleaned the cooler? And uh, if you're like us, you don't keep your cooler inside the house. You know, the cooler. You keep it in the garage, the shop, the loft. And for some reason, why do cobwebs always want to hang out on top of coolers? Yeah. The, every cooler that I've ever had to go get before an event was dirty, filthy, just dirty. And I'm thinking, how does the cooler get so dirty? Nothing else in the shop is dirty, but every cooler the is white, dirty. Um, the white lid, I think. I don't know why. So the cooler was filthy. So I did all of that. Not only that, but I also put together a wagon. What are you laughing about? Why Allison, are you grabbing? Lester. She's grabbing my arm, y'all. Look. Allison says, Lester, your pee pad is showing. My inner pee pad is showing. <laughs> <laughs> my inner pee pad is showing. It's true. Oh, Lord. It's true. Like, it, like seriously, you're alive. You're well enough to go. We were blessed to be able to have money to afford a very nice gift. 
We got to spend time with old and young today. We laughed. We smiled. We ate delicious food. We hugged people. And here we are back home. We got everything we wanted to accomplish accomplished today. Even Jake, even my nephew Jake was sitting there like, didn't want Lisa to see him. He's like, oh my God, this thing is just dragging on. And he has to sit there like, and we're all like, <laughs> dad's like, well, God forbid you have to participate in a shower. At least you didn't have to participate in birth. Just wait until. Or no. carrying a baby for nine months. My dad had the right idea. My dad just like fell back and fell asleep. My dad just like conked it out and he was good. Dad didn't even realize half the shower. You left halfway through on the Argo and then you drove where you could no one could even see you in the Argo. It looked like the Argo was driving itself. I had to make a sneak getaway because I couldn't go pee outside Stephanie's front door or back door. Jamie, they live along the they live along the road. Anyway, it is what it is. We're happy to have spent some quality family time. Um and that's all I got to say about that. Lester, did you figure out where the sneaker came from? What sneaker? Jamie, you don't even want to know this story. I don't want to even spook you. Let's not focus too much on the question because we can. this is going to take us down a rabbit hole. Okay. If we focus on this question, we're going to go off down a rabbit hole that a lot of people cannot handle. I'll just say real fast, though, while at the JL Ranch property on a live video driving across the pasture where I have driven a hundred times, I run across a shoe a sneaker, one almost as big as my foot. So it come from an adult male. It was tied, which means it had been knocked off of someone's foot. And I stopped and I'm like, the heck? What day? Right today. today. And you didn't say anything to me? I didn't want to spook you. I didn't want to spook you. So we- Was there a leg in it? <laughs> no, there oh, was no fine. leg in it. It's fine. But I don't know how it got there. And so there was quite the speculations of maybe the, I, I don't see, the, here we go, down that rabbit hole of the what ifs. I don't know. But it was not my sneaker. Everyone knows that I wear Crocs, the cheap knockoff version of dude shoes, which are called Hey Roots. <laughs> That's not funny. It's funny because, because I did it. <laughs> Dude shoes and hay roots, they feel the same on your feet. One costs probably forty dollars. No, they're like hey dudes are like seventy dollars. Hey dudes are about seventy dollars. I wear hay rude, which are like seven dollars from Timo. Big win, Timo, whatever you call that. Big win for me, hay rude, and no one seems to give me much of a problem about it. It's it's not a big deal. But uh, anyway, All so of mine are hey, Ruse. I don't wear any regular, like I don't wear any name brand of those things here. Like we're on a farm. Yeah, we don't, we are not easy on shoes, whether they're name brand or not. Like shoe, we we wear the heck out of our shoes. So hey, Rude. Okay. Are you so, okay? No. How do you open this cup? It just has ice underneath it. Can you get it to come out? I'm actually in a really see. It's like frozen shut. There you go. Oh Lord! Careful. Okay, I'm using my uh, Longhorn Lester Fireman's Prayer Cup. This was the one that was gifted to me, and I love this. Mm. It might belong to the pastor next door. Then why is that pastor out in my pasture? Why is the pastor in my pasture? Out with my longhorns. Was the shoe in the flood area? So a lot of people thought that, but no, it was up close to the barn. The new barn. It was behind the barn in a spot that I would have seen. I have that. chills now. Yes. Like real chills. Okay. Well, you want to hear something even spookier? Oh, God. What? When I, the, the container was also wide open. The container with the lawnmower and the side oh, by side. No, we, we normally lock it, but someone had spilt a bag of cement in the doorway didn't clean it it got wet and hardened so now my door won't close all the way i have to get and chip it chip it all out have you looked at the cameras i did and all of the cameras face 
everything frontward. We have no cameras that face the actual cows. Well, here's why. Because I used to. And then guess what happened? In one night's time, we had 500 pictures and my battery went from full battery to zero because it's motion activated. So you can't have cameras facing your cows or every cow walks by gets a picture. And so that was a problem. So what I did was I had one. I don't want to give the whole Internet yeah. the, the location of all my cameras, but there ain't any way anybody can come from the front of the property to the back of the property without getting seen. Right. So I don't know. Could it have been the wind? Could it have been the whatever? But the shoe makes no sense at all. I don't want to scare you all. I know how much you love those Longhorns and our sweet Sadie. Well, but I guess I know where we're sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Volume seems down. Oh, no. We're not going down that path again. I, I don't know. Um. So anyway, so the baby shower was the highlight of our day. It started early this morning with me putting together a special gift that I got for Jake and Lissa's baby. Uh, the same gift that I give to every child. Uh, it's a wagon. I love giving a wagon. And I don't mean the little plasticky kind. I like to use the old radio flyers because they will last a lifetime. There's something vintage and just really neat about that. And so the story goes, you know the story of the wagon? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just tell you all right quick the I story. I don't want to ruin your video, though. Well, I made a video, but most of these folks won't watch my video anyway. But listen, there's a story that goes behind the wagon, and it's a beautiful story. But it started years and years ago when L.E., who's now 24, was just a little man. And just like a lot of kids, he would sometimes have a hard time staying asleep. So most of us parents know that we put a kid in the car and we drive him around the block or two. You've ever done that mm -hmm. to keep your baby asleep. So I'm blessed that, you know, we also live out where we have four wheelers and side by sides. So I would also take L.E. and put him on there on the four wheeler in front of me, hug him and drive around. And he'd also fall asleep. So I had it very easy. However, the problem is once that movement or that motion stopped, he'd wake up wide awake. And so what I discovered was, bless you, you got the sneezes. I got the itchies. I don't know why, but I feel like I'm itching all over. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and so what I would do is somebody had gifted me a radio flyer wagon. And up until that point, his mom just kept all of his toys in it. So what I did was I took out all the toys and I put a pillow laying on the bottom of it. And I would take baby L.E. and lay him on top of that pillow. Now, he was a baby. He wasn't old enough to set up or crawl around. He would just lay there. But I could take that wagon and I could just do this. The simple motion of back and forth. Or I, I got so good, I could actually get onto the couch with my Xbox controller and put my foot into the little hole, the handle of the wagon handle, and use my foot. It was an amazing calf workout. And I could move the wagon back and forth like this over here. And L.E. would just sleep away. And I could play my games and do all I wanted to do. Um, it didn't stop there. Once he got older, I put the sides on the wagon. And I would put two pillows, one at the back, one at the laying at the bottom. So he can, now he could sit in the wagon like, like this over here. And I'd put his toys in there with him, all of his little french fries, his thermos, whatever he had. And I'd pull him around. So whereas all of these moms... Or getting to the mall and they're like opening their SUV, their minivans, and they're pulling out this giant contraption. And then they're pushing this button and all these things and all these things start to pop open and wheels pop out and hoods come open and, and mosquito nets come down. That was never me. I was never that guy. I would simply stop and get out of the back of the truck, pull out my entire wagon, plop it down, pillow, pillow, kid. And there we would go. Mall, park, didn't matter. Walmart, everywhere we, we went, L.E. was at, with that wagon. But it, give, it gets even better. If you're like, wow, Lester, tell me more. Tell me more. I'm buying me a wagon. Look at this. At some point, once L.E. began to walk, he would pull the wagon around himself. He became the wagon puller. 
his mom and I were so clever. We're like, hey, you go to your room with your wagon and put whatever toys you want in there and you can pull them into the other part of the house. Oh. But whenever you're done playing, all them toys go back in that wagon. And so Ellie would learn to take that wagon to his little bedroom. He'd fill it up with whatever toys he wanted, his wrestling action figures, his Legos, whatever. And he'd pull them to the living room or the kitchen and he would unload all them toys. He'd play. But once he was done, like, uh-uh, uh-uh, pick up all your toys. And they'd go right back in that wagon. And that was just the most amazing gift that I was gifted uh, at a baby shower. Uh, one that I did attend because I had to. It was for up me. And uh, and so since that day, I have always gifted every niece, every nephew, every neighbor friend, every teacher friend. If they have a baby on the way, I will gift them a wagon, either a pink or a red, because they do make pink radio flyers. Keep talking. Wow. So, no. Nothing. <laughs> I love that, though. It's okay. Hmm. So I think it's really neat that you have like a, a signature gift. I kind of have a signature shower gift too, but mine's a little bit more different than yours. Like mine is always like medicine, sunscreen, the lotions, like all of the, the product that you kind of don't think about, you know, like, and then of course the cute outfit and shoes, because who doesn't love to see baby shoes? Um, you don't want to see baby. Well, shoes. I'm saying we saw tons of baby shoes today and tons of ooing and awing over baby shoes and baby Crocs and baby slippers and baby sandals and baby footsies and baby everything ooing and awing. The funniest part of the whole shower though, and no one caught this on video, uh, was G sitting in the corner, your mom sitting in the corner and I'm like, oh, those shoes are so cute. And Lou pipes up and goes, doesn't matter. Because no matter what you put them in, as soon as you bring them to G's house, she takes her shoes off, their socks off, their pants off, and just lets them run wild. And that's all your kids want to do then is go to G's house and basically get naked. And everybody goes, yeah, that's exactly what happens. And your mom goes, I never knew that that made y'all mad. Yeah. Like, I'm sitting here like everybody's stuff is going side by side. And I'm cracking up because everything that that – G does when she watches kids, which is like a, it's a grandma thing, right? Like what happens at grandma's house happens at grandma's house. It's grandma's house. But everybody else was like, yeah, don't even worry about that. Doesn't matter what kind of cute things you buy. Like it just made me laugh. Really so, hard. Well, you know, I think that, every, so here's what happens. Now I'm going to say something that's going to offend people, but it's not meant to be offensive. If that makes any sense to you guys, when you get to a certain age, ladies and gentlemen, help me if I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, but once you get to a certain age, you kind of have a screw it mentality because you've already done your time. And now if you want to take off your grandbaby's shoes, if you want to take off your grandbabies, because, you know, moms will bundle them up. Babies will arrive like this. They look like they're going into an insane asylum. Like they've been, this is how babies arrive. And grandma's like saying, uh-uh, we ain't having no baby at my house like that. And so every grandma... <sighs> It's her prerogative because she's done her time. She's raised her kids. And especially my mom watches kids for free. And if she's going to sit there and watch them for free, well, she darn sure will make them be more comfy. And she'll pull off them shoes and pull off them pants. And them babies run around with diapers only. <laughs> Girls or boys don't matter. They're running around with diapers only. And I think that older people have served their time. They've earned the right to do what the heck they want to do. And they ain't apologizing to nobody. <laughs> they ain't apologizing. And my mom, if she said, well, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. She wasn't meaning it. It was more like, oh, bless your heart. I'll see your babies tomorrow morning. Because <laughs> she will. She'll see them right back over there tomorrow morning. All them babies for free, free daycare. And if anyone who's had to pay for daycare, trust me. Before anyone gets upset with my mom pulling off shoes and pants and I don't whatever think anybody else, anybody was really upset. It was just a funny. Let them pay for daycare for a week because I paid. Funny... I, I had to pay for daycare when Lex was Le. My mom watched Lex, but when Le was a baby, my mom was working, and I had to pay for daycare not and daycare, for daycare, and that was darn near twenty years ago. And daycare is not cheap. It wasn't cheap twenty years ago, and I'm rocking the table. Yeah, and it sure is not cheap any now. Daycare is not cheap. So, what was something that you were allowed to do at your grandma's house that you weren't allowed to do at home? 
your nanny's house, I'll yeah. just say. Because I know it wasn't at P Pats because you weren't allowed to do anything at P Pats. Yeah. So believe it or not, at Nanny's house, we could actually drink out of the fridge, not the water hose. Because <laughs> what's wrong? My mom, my mom, now y'all may love Gigi now, or you may not, but when my mom was my mom, when <laughs> back in them days. It was water hose. We were sent outside, and if we were thirsty, then we'd go to the hose. We had to go to the hose. However, if I was at my nanny's house and I got thirsty, come on in, sweetie. And she would, she had, she had the mason jars, but it was what we would drink out of. She didn't have like a glass. We didn't even have plastic cups at nanny's. No. Everything was glass, glass, mason jar. And she would put those big old, remember the ice cubes would come in those little. Hey, we had ice cubes that actually had the metal thing in the middle, too. I remember those. And, and we you'd had do that, the, and it would break the ice cubes loose. At the farmhouse, at my grandparents' farmhouse, the fridge freezer was just one door, and up top was the thing that folded down inside, uh -huh. and that's yeah. where those ice cube trays were. Yeah, there was a little spot for ice yeah. cube trays. And my nanny would get out them ice cube trays, and she'd break us some ice up in that thing, and she would give us some ice, and she'd fill it with water. It probably was still water, <laughs> or maybe Kool-Aid. She never gave us sodas. But, uh, no... It was funny, but it was funny because my mom has always been my mom. But if you remember, there was a time when she was mama or there was a time when she was mommy. Mm. Then she was mama and now she's mom. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, back when she was mommy or mama. Yeah, we got we got we had to drink out of the hose. <laughs> mm. Because. She wanted her house to stay clean, and there was and no, no flies. way. And if you're paying for AC, you didn't want the doors open and closing because kids running out all the time. I know. Yeah. I feel that today. I feel that today when the kids are here all summer, especially when we lived in Plum Grove, and all the boys were there all summer. And oh. it was like, in, out, in, out. 79 cups and drinks open and, and half drank, and open. nobody knows what's what. And like. I'm losing my mind because I'm also trying to work in those times. And Lester's just like out in the pasture, just, just being able to ditch it all for the day. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it, this is, I'm going to tell y'all something, and this is going to make a lot of y'all mad. I don't mean to make anybody mad, but it seems like everything I say makes somebody mad. But in the old days, in the older days, not all moms went to work. A lot of moms, their job was to raise them kids and their job was to take care of the house. And what a job. And then think about how sneaky our government is, y'all. Think about how sneaky. The, I know we all love America. We all love our government. My country tis of thee. But they found a way to say, Let's make women, women need rights. Women needs to be, women need to be included in, in, in all of the equal, this, this and that. And so they sent all these women to work. And what happened when all these women had to go to work? Two things. The government got a whole lot more money from taxes. Yeah. Think about it. Income taxes. Now, not only were your men having to work and pay taxes, now women were working and paying taxes. That was bad, but what was worse is now it was no longer mom raising her kids. Now it was school and daycare people and neighbors and sometimes grandparents yeah. having to raise kids. And so think about how much of a disadvantage the older, older generation has an advantage of actually being raised by mom. Yeah. And then all of us. I mean, my mom raised us for a short while, and then my mom went to work because she had to make, you know, make ends meet. And so it was raised by whoever could watch us, right? Yeah. Daycares. And I can promise you, daycares don't do near as good a job as what mamas do or grandmamas do. That's my opinion. We can all disagree if y'all want to. Ain't no one going to make us disagree on that or we don't have to agree uh, it is okay eileen says well it's always been a woman's choice i agree except for i think when times are financial times are so hard that some women don't have a choice they have to go to work yeah i was gonna say that it allowed if you like look at the cost of cost of living during those times it was relative to what a one income family could live off of and these days uh, it's very hard to live off of one income. 
no matter how big or small your life is, it's, it's really challenging. Sometimes you can't live off of two. So, and that's due to inflation, all kinds of things that are smarter than Lester and I and have nothing, no way that we can control that. It just was a really different perspective to look at that whenever Lester was talking about it. Oh no, your phone is only at 10%. Lester. Oh no, my phone's down to 10%. We better talk fast. You better Faster than what I'm already talking. Oh, no, gosh. so it really makes it to where grandparents truly have had to raise two generations of kids. Most grandparents not only had to raise their own kids, but they've also raised their grandkids. And I'm not knocking any moms. No, I'm not knocking not, any moms. That's not a mom's fault or a dad's fault. That's like a, a economy I think that you. I think that at some point, most people had to have two incomes to make ends meet. Yeah. And if you didn't, then you either had maybe the one parent worked two jobs, which was just, just as bad because my dad did work two jobs yeah. when my mom was the one who took care of all of his kids. Yeah. And so dad had two jobs to make ends meet. And that was in the seventies or eighties. So no, I don't know y'all. I don't, I don't even know where this all came from. <laughs> I don't Where'd know this how we got down this from? path either, but who's, a who's all mad at Lester now? Who's mad at Lester now? <laughs> I didn't mean to make anybody mad. I have, I have my opinions on stuff. Yeah. We do. And I love sharing them with people, even though not everyone agrees with me. It's fine. Y'all. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, I think that I'll just talked about the shower and just, you know, just kind of led us down a path. It was, a, it was a really fun day. Stephanie and Buddy worked their tails off to get their bathroom and their their barn done to be able to host the, the uh, party today. And Stephanie had all kinds of amazing creative things that we did. Uh, my favorite part of the whole shower was that uh, she ordered a bunch of blank uh, baby onesies and then some fabric paint. And then we all got to create an outfit for the baby it was really sweet uh what did you put on yours um i so i even though y'all think that i'm a very creative type of guy i'm not that creative when i'm put under pressure and so a white onesie was dropped in front of me with a paintbrush and some paint and i had to decorate it and i could not think of anything anything so what I, Jamie, look at her. How did that just happen? I don't know. You saw know. that? Okay. I legitimately do not know. Listen, this is the most, okay, I'm going to continue my story. But something spooky just happened. I heard a dog bark in the distance. And I happened just to glance over. And all of a sudden, our doorknob, I'm looking at our front door. Our doorknob turned and the door began to open. Our door opens inward. Our door opens inward and all of our dogs run out. Who no opened? one else is here. There's no one here. Who opened the gosh darn door for the dog? Someone turned that doorknob and opened that door and all the dogs ran out to go see what was going on. Okay. Is that the craziest thing we've seen? We've seen some crazy stuff here, but that was darn spooky. Okay, so I was sitting there and I was given a white, pure white, brand new onesie and paint. And I could not think of anything. And I'm looking over trying to cheat, like seeing whatever everyone I else totally is doing. I totally expected you to paint an I heart Uncle Wester. I like was waiting for that That moment. would have been so good. Why didn't you tell me that? Well, we weren't at the same table, believe it or not. I was looking over and I'm I like, was not set beside Jamie. I, I was set somewhere else. I was really expecting that to come out of you. I was like, I can't believe you didn't do that. So what I did do is I did some brands. I did the little rocking. I did the rocking M. I did the I did the Longhorn Lester. I did that brand right over there, the LHL, mm -hmm. and then I did a JL and put a heart on the inside of it. So I just did some brands. Yeah. So it it came out pretty cute, but uh, I, I I'm there was not a contest. But if there were, I would not have won. There's no way. Sister Kim actually drew freehand a cow. And then on that cow's back was a pig. And on that pig's back oh, was a chicken. One. And I'm like, who did that? I thought it was a stencil. It was amazing. Oh, wow. Sister Kim, man, that's my sister, y'all. She's great. 
I'm still looking at that door. See who's going to, what little Jill, Jill must like do hand lettering or something because she did, she did a, uh, it just said mama's boy, but it looked like it was a stamp. Like it was beautiful. I like, I didn't know how much artistic ability that we had in the family. Like it was, it was a really neat little game to play and, and such a thoughtful idea. Well, a lot of people in the comments have already seen these. So my oh. question is who in the world already went home and made a video because normally my dad does that. My dad is always, he, my dad has to be the first one to beat everybody. So who's made the video? Jake. 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 Jake was live during that Oh, part. okay. Well, if that was That's live. That's allowed. Okay. <laughs> That's a live video is fine. Okay. Thank you all for that. I'm thinking who already went home in that short of time and built themselves a video already? Somebody says maybe the robot did that. <clears throat> The robot. Plus, you are the robot. It's not possible. Don't don't put that into my head. Do not put that into my head, Jamie, because I will right here in front of all these wonderful people. I will do it, and I'm not ashamed of it. Nothing embarrasses me anymore. Somebody says, and you wonder why Sadie barked. <laughs> Sadie's happy now, though. She's Sadie's a happy, happy, happy girl, and we love her. You we know, had a great time. It was fun talking to Bud and Steph. Uh, we got there early to help set up. Yeah. So that gave me a chance to look around a little bit. I've not had a chance to pee pat and snoop around the way Jamie has. So oh, I get all up in there. And I'm like, I'm making a video. <laughs> they have a, they have a, a new barn slash shop slash living quarters. It's really neat. I think that they have plans to have kind of a she shed. Yeah. Addition along with buddy has an office spot along with a future tack room for when, Alora gets her little pony or her horse along with a place for their RV. It's a good, really laid out, well-designed little building, but I hadn't had a chance to see it. I've driven by, but I hadn't actually got out to look. And so I got out to look and able to walk around and kind of tour and saw everything. And it's a really neat setup. So well, Steph did, I can't like the bathroom looks professional. Steph did all of the drywall. I mean, I know that they did a lot together, but Steph did the drywalling and the mudding and taping and the, what do you call that? The, the texture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's beautiful. I walked in and I was like, Steph, she goes, this is why I couldn't hang out for the last two weeks. I couldn't do anything. Cause all I've done is this bathroom. I, yep. I mean it like it looks professional. It, it, it is absolutely is amazing. Beautiful. Mr. Roboto Lester. <laughs> Uh, they got the spillway guys coming tomorrow. First thing, which they, is um, so, 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 so exciting. Uh, yes, we're excited. We're, my biggest fear is that we're going to get another rain before they fix the spillway. It's not, and I to. don't think that the spillway can handle another swell like that because that's a lot of water pouring over that thing i do believe these guys are going to fix it right at least according to the the plans that i sit down and talked with um mr victory about i think it's going to be done right which is we're excited about that to get that fixed jamie's been worried about her horses going across it but uh it's it's still plenty wide where it's not going to collapse. There's no nothing pushing on it right now. So we're fine. But a tomorrow, sure enough, first thing, those guys will be here. Baby, who opened that door for y'all? Right? She's the first one out. That's she, even uh, this is Fiona, and she was the first one out. Who did it, Fifi? Pam says, I can't wait to see another great job by Victory Dirt. I know, Pam. They are amazing. They're really good. So we're hoping hey, that are they Are they going to bring more sand back for the round pen, too? We haven't talked about that. Oh, Let's, sorry. I, but my mind doesn't work that way. I have to do one job at a time. Not me. I can think about all the jobs that would need that resource and just do them all in in say, like I can think about that part of each of the potential jobs. I know we think very differently. Yeah, well, it's just the cause of your job. Yeah. You, you have to think that way. Jamie's job is a whole lot like a lot of your computers or your phones. You have multiple things opened up, and you can just kind of swipe through and go back and forth on different pages of whatever you're working on. Uh, on your computer, all those tabs at the top or all those tabs are opened. My mind's not like that. I want to have one tab opened. So if my tab is open to the spillway, that's my focus. And then later I may have to close that tab and then I'll open up the tab of time to eat lunch because I haven't eaten all day. 
or whatever. You know what I'm saying. But I like to have one tab at a time. Jamie can have multiple tabs open. That's not me. A lot of folks are talking about Billy. Billy actually got a pretty good deal. Uh, my dad was able to find a forever home for Billy, where Billy is now a herd bull of a beautiful herd of beautiful cows. Um, Billy is going to be missed by all of us because he was such a gentle giant. Big, big time. Now, I have a special thing for Billy because he and Tex really did set the internet on fire for a few years. As a matter of fact, some of those biggest videos, those million view videos were Tex and Billy and they had their back and forth thing for so long. You know what's crazy? What? I think now, like, they were like arch rivals, but in a different scenario, they probably would have been best friends. Like if we kind of knew what we know now about putting bulls together and putting all heifers together and, and that type of thing, I think that they genuinely <laughs> would have been friends. Hold on. Chili Mama says, I miss watching them fight. <laughs> they had some knockdown drag outs, didn't they? Billy almost killed me. Billy did Not almost kill Jamie. Though. That was the saddest part about it all. Is that, I know. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just say something. And this is what my dad was telling me earlier today. We were talking about everything and my dad is having a hard time explaining to people the same way we have a hard time explaining to people that granny and Billy were partners, but we don't think that granny is in the pasture now looking around wondering where's her partner the way if you lose your partner or if you're separated from your partner, animals in nature, they have like um, a, a life goes on type mentality and they don't skip a beat. They go to the next pasture, to the next grass and they're there. They live that way. I know we as humans will sometimes humanize the animals a whole lot and think about families and friends and they're going to miss their loved ones. And I get that y'all. I, I like that. And I like creating stories like that. But in reality, we do know that sometimes, like Jamie said, bulls have to be with bulls. Cows have to be with cows. And that's just and smart farm a, management. Bulls need a whole herd. And this sounds, this is where it really steps away from human and goes into an animalistic space. Well, hold on now. Careful what you say. Because if if all Billy had is granny and granny, this is, I'm embarrassed to even say this right now. Could you just use Lester and Jamie in, in this and just, no, I was just going to say that granny's going to get worn out. That's oh. all. <laughs> that ain't a Lester and Jamie story. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that Billy's will always desire to have multiple and, uh, because bulls do want to have multiples guys. Everyone knows that animals in nature, they, <laughs> they like harems. Okay. They like, they like harems. And you were going to no. toss that into us. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. I thought you were going to say that. No, I was just, I was just going to say, so it's the same way of this is Carl and Debbie. When it's just Carl and Debbie, Debbie looks like she is just ratchet. Like she, she's, she's worn out, worn out. She, her feathers Sorry. are plucked out. She has no time to eat. She just is busy. So the best thing for a bull is, and the best thing for the ladies that are with the bull is so that they aren't the only one. Yeah. Now my dad had a hard time with that, but, uh, he would never have let Billy go if he did not have a perfect home yeah. laid out kind of the way we were with Santoro. We looked around and shopped around for a while for Santoro. And even though we always knew early on Santoro would have to eventually go, we really wanted to have kind of a say so same for all of our rescue dogs. We bring the rescue dogs in and God, there were so many of them thinking back over the year of 2023 and all of the dogs that we brought in and took to the vets and took care of and all that. And then when it came time to rehome them, it was hard because Super you hard. wanted to, it's hard to tell people no, if they're interested in a dog, but at the same time, you have to, you wanted the dog to go to the best home possible. 
And I feel like we did that with all the dogs and the cats. We haven't been let down. No one's let us down. No. I guess my biggest letdown is you get attached and you hope that the, the new owner will contact you on occasion with pictures or videos. And I would say that some do, but most don't. Most you never hear from again. And so that makes you kind of wonder, wonder what so-and-so's up to these days. Wonder how so-and-so's doing, you know. Yeah. But, man, Carl, there's some cute comments about Carl. And Yes, Billy did go to a friend. Uh, so my dad been around for a while, and he belongs to a lot of communities of cattlemen. Now, my dad doesn't do pure breeds the way we try what we're trying to do. But just cattlemen in general is like you all take like a Facebook group or a book club. You find a community of people, an MC, a motorcycle club. You find a group who have similarities. Uh, right now, we kind of – we okay, this is going to sound dumb. Y'all are going to laugh at us if I say this. But do y'all know that they're trying to get us into an Alliance RV group <laughs> they're trying they did it they, they put they they, they didn't right give us up. a choice they just signed us up yeah. we're, we're in an alliance rv i'm like i'm thinking i always thought an rv is an rv if you're an rver you're just an rver you go travel and you rv oh no 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 the type of RV you have your Winnebago like RVers, clubbed, uh, and then you have your Airstream RVers, and your Winnebago people they don't interface with the Airstream, and the Airstream don't talk to the. It's ridiculous, y'all. It's ridiculous. We're just, we're just like, hey, we just want to go hang out on occasion. We don't care what brand. We don't really care the brand of RV or how or, many slides you have. Or, or if it's a fifth wheel or a tow behind or a truck people camper. People get so dumb like, about stuff like that. That matters to people. And it's like a really big deal. And here they put us in this group. And I'm telling Lester, I'm like, people are pulling over, like making hand signals on the interstate to like pull over so they can meet other people that have the same RV as them. And I'm like, if someone pulled up next to us while we're hauling the RV and we're like waving to and like held up a sign that says pull over next thing, I would think we were going to get murdered yeah. or that there was something no. dead hanging off the back of it, like and on so, vacation. So listen, so this is the funniest and the dumbest thing I've ever done. The funniest and the dumbest thing I've ever done, but an RV pulled up alongside us. Jamie was following me. I was pulling the RV. Jamie's behind me. Because I was scared. I was nervous. I was nervous. And this other RV pulls up beside me. And this guy gives me every hand gesture he could think of besides the dirty finger. He's like, and I ignored him. Then he goes. And I'm like, what is this guy doing? And I'm thinking, what in the world? And I'm thinking, I'm watching him. And I just like. Anyway, I'm thinking, what is he up to, Jamie? I didn't get it. So now, the dumbest thing about what I've been doing lately, whenever I pull up along somebody, I don't know why, but I was like, <laughs> and, I, and I'm sitting here going through every every motion. And I'm in the passenger I'm doing, seat, I'm, I'm and doing, I'm like, I'm doing still stuff like, got him. And people are saying like, and, and I'm, I'm over here doing the same thing. I'm like. I, I don't know what it first. means. I don't know what it means, but it's a vacation thing, I believe. And RV people are like, isn't this like the devil or the devil? Or one of those is rock and roll. One of those means, this means Hawaii. Hang ten. That's hang ten. This is hang 10 from Hawaii. What's that? That's rock and roll. That's rock and roll. Okay. What's that? What's that? Don't know. What's this? I don't know. Okay, see, I don't I don't want to be devil horns. That's bloods and crips. I don't want to be accused of anybody trying to come at me like I'm repping Here's what I know. from my neighborhood. This is the peace sign. Uh, people do that. I could flip them the peace sign. Jamie. Oh, I did a thing on Facebook. That just sent a bunch of balloons flying on Facebook. That was cool. And this still means like we're good, right? That's, and this still means okay. I thought this meant okay. That's all I know is, hey, guys, okay, or, or good job. If I see something cool, I'm, yeah, that's cool, Like, man. when you're backing up the trailer and I want you to stop, I'll give you the okay. That's probably not a trailer signal. I don't know. This means stop. Listen. Usually I'm like, ah. 
they scream really loud. Yeah, but you know, bottom line is the point of the matter was people like to be, I guess, in groups of those who have similar interests. And so for my dad to belong to a cattleman's group, and he has several groups he belongs to, a lot of his trips to the feed store, uh, which he does on a pretty regular basis, even though he doesn't need feed, is just to hang out with other guys who he can conversate with who have the same interest, usually cows. So for him to find a guy who needed a good bull and for all that to work out for him makes my dad very happy because he truly does love, and it's okay to love a bull, y'all. So good for my dad. But that RV group thing is just, that's not who we are, y'all. Don't, if y'all ever think about getting an RV, we will be your friend if you have a pop-up tent. We don't yeah. care. All right. It was just like, it's very interesting. Like they have. You could have a truck with a camper in the back. of. Remember the old campers in the back of a truck? We'd still hang out with you. We don't care. They have like meet and greets. And Hold like on. But those folks are going to want to use our restroom. That's the only problem. We will no, hang out with you. truck come with restrooms now. Truck, no, a truck. No, yes, I, it no. does. I mean the truck bed camper. That uh, They do. And showers. Yay. I looked at it the other day because I was like, how are they doing that? Because that stuff comes up on my like on my reels and things like that. And Jamie, there ain't no hole in the truck bed. There's a tank. A and it empties the same way. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Okay. The things, well, look, all I, all truck I, campers do have bathrooms. Thank you, Leuven. All I was saying is we'll be happy to camp with anybody as long as you don't have to share a bathroom. That's true. I don't know, I'm not pants. really into sharing a camper bathroom with anybody that I don't love. Well, I don't fit in the camper bathroom, so I have to leave the door open. Just saying, y'all. Not that anyone cares, but I don't fit inside the camper bathroom. So, one thing I never thought about when we were buying a camper. That's not true. You fit in the back bathroom, not the front bathroom. <sighs> if you don't I, like the if back I can sit with my legs crossed. <laughs> yeah, if I want to sit with my legs crossed like a pretty lady, an English lady. You sat in them in videos. You sat when we were looking at them. So, if you somehow got bigger this is not, since we went is, camper Maybe I've gotten bigger. Maybe, I don't know. Then this, something is wrong. Anyway, can I stop sitting this way now? I don't know why you're sitting that way. I'm but just, you're like full on sitting that way. This right is now. the way I have to sit. So, you know what? I don't need that mental picture, says somebody. No, you don't. Just laugh with us, y'all. Just laugh at this and let's move on. Can we just laugh and move on, Jamie? <laughs> now I got the giggles myself, darn it. Anyway, what else we got going on? We've already that's we've already been here 50 minutes. Yes. 50 minutes. Time is flying. Wow. So we brought two alpacas back with us yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, you probably saw part of the shearing video, right? That you saw. Yes. Um, oh, I have an ice okay. Don't die. in my throat. Um, so, yes, I did post the shearing of Annie. It was too long of a video. I don't know why, but I've been limited on my space of how much, uh, how long my videos can be posted for. So I did not do, I know you guys hate part one and part two. I would have never done a part one and part two just to keep you hanging on. But uh, I did record the Annie's and got that into a video, which was still 15 minutes. Yeah. And I also have the Indy, which will be coming up soon. And then I have, uh, I have their departure and homecoming tomorrow coming out. And my perspective is much different than than the Lester perspective of everything happening. I actually couldn't watch the shearing, and and as it's not because no no one is being harmed, no one's being hurt. It's just sad. But the fact that it causes Mandy said she cried. Uh, Mandy, you cried. cried. Jamie, it, cried. it causes stress. It, you can feel their stress, and as soon as it's over. Their stress is gone and all of that, but it's just the the fact of it happening. And I have to tell you that bless Tina's heart for being able to do that. And I don't mean that in the Texas way. I actually mean like literally bless her heart for being able to navigate through that and not find emotion in, in that. Maybe she does in her own. But I feel really blessed that I'm no longer the one having to 
manhandle any of the alpacas to be so because then they don't look at me like why did you do that to me i'm not seeking forgiveness in that moment it, it is somebody who comes once a year shears them does it very quickly does it very well safely knows so much about alpacas and educates us and and others while she's doing it and the fact that it doesn't take because it used to take us a day per alpaca and it was awful it was awful physically for us it was awful for the alpacas because it took us so long um it was really stressful uh so my tears are because i feel bad for annie but i also know in my heart that this is the right thing to do does that make sense it makes perfect sense it makes perfect sense but yeah i get the sounds of annie are hard to listen to yeah. but I just, you guys, if you're not there, you just don't know the TLC, just the, what tenderness and love yeah. that Miss Tina does when she does what she has to do. And she has to do it. The little bit, I would say, what, 15 minutes or so of sad that we have to watch of her being sheared is going to save her hours and, and months of heat exhaustion. Yeah. Friends, it her life. when it gets hot, because it's just unbearably hot for it, it these would, babies. It would cause them to to have heat stroke if we did not shear them. This is a great example, Catherine. Catherine, that's very clever. A great analogy. It's like when your kids get shots. You have to take your kids to get those vaccinations, and it breaks your heart. Can you reach that baby girl? You did it. I did it. It breaks your heart to see them. Cry. Oh, it hurts, and there's the fear and the scared of the needle. But you also know that that's going to prevent them from getting a whole lot of horrible diseases, you know, through the course of their lifetime if they were to come in to contact with certain things. So then, absolutely. I that also, great, great analogy. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. I also get really emotional about just the the shuffle, the move. And I'm, I'm getting emotional even right it's okay. now. okay. Annie's doing wonderful. If you're concerned about Annie, Annie's doing wonderful, y'all. Annie was already trying to wean Oki. She was already pushing him away from the teat. She was already, he he's eating grains alongside her. And today at the sanctuary, I saw Ernie and Oki having the best of times. I can promise you, and I give you my word, I'm not going to lie to you, I have no reason to lie to you. Oki and Ernie were frolicking around, having a great time. Oki is not, looking around and crying for mom the way a goat might be when you separate them at yeah. birth or whatever. As a matter of fact, neither are crying for each other. And I think it's because he still has his dad and Annie's here with Indy, her daughter. Mm -hmm. And I think that we did the right thing. Yeah. And don't forget that on most alpaca farms, even when we went and got Ernie, they keep the males and females separated. Yeah. So even though we like the whole family unit and it's fun to see a family, it's cute and it's and it's and it makes it feel like, you know, a big happy family. It's not really the way real management can happen on a, you know. Don't they call that animal husbandry? I don't know. I think I so. I don't know. I just know like I was pretty emotional yesterday and I it's in, it's a lot in my head. Uh, and the way that, again, we humanize things. And I expected to have, you know, a little bit more aftermath today. Um, and I guess because taking away goats and baby goats, like you do have that. Yeah. But in reality, I Amy has been her normal self. Well, like, she still has a partner. Her yeah. partner's Indy. And Ernie shows a partner. It's Oki. And they're going to stay with partners. And I'll just say this, that, and this is not probably going to come out right, but what you have to do, and I think anybody who has a farm knows this, you sometimes have to do what's right for the babies, meaning the animals, even though it may hurt the us as the, the people yeah. who like to watch the babies. Yeah. So we have made hard decisions but we try as hard as we can to look past our own emotions and do what is best for each and every baby. Here's one example, and I'll give you this, and I won't keep beating on it, but Pig Trudy. You guys know that that Pig Trudy has a very special place in my heart. She does. I love Pig Trudy. 
God, I love her. And when I see her at the sanctuary and I spend time with her at the sanctuary, the way she looks at me and the way I look at her and feel about her, the flooded of memories that come back of the amazing times that we had when she was little and growing up. And don't think for a minute that I would not love just to open up that trailer, give her some oatmeal and bring her right inside right here with me so I could spend time with her every single day. Now I'm getting emotional, but I also know that Longhorn Lester's is not the ideal home for a pig. It's not a place for a pig. It's not. She has a beautiful pond and the shelters and the pastures and flat, easy to navigate terrain. And she knows her way around with her friends, Peggy Pig, Tiny, Tiny Tim, Tim Pig and Newton. Pig Newton. And they could for sure not navigate these hills in this terrain. And so we have to do the best thing for Pig Trudy, even though it breaks my heart. Guys, we can get in the truck to leave and she'll walk to the fence and watch me. And it breaks me. I don't even want to look at her. I, I want to pretend like I'm looking over there at yeah. Sister Kim's cow. So I don't have to look at Pig Trudy and make eye contact. And I feel like, now I know she's, I know what you're saying. She's just a pig, Lester. She don't have feelings. Well, the hell she does it. She does. She does. And she loves me. And she loves when I spend time with her. But I know that this is not the ideal location for pigs. Um, I see someone asked about Starla. And I'll go ahead and say, we did not bring Starla back because I still am afraid She's going to find herself out of the pastures. Starla was raised with our dogs here in the shop. And so she doesn't understand why she has to be out there in the pastures. She wants to be here in the shop. Yeah. And so that little Houdini can find any way to get out. And she finds ways to inch her little self through gates and fences. And here she is and right she's here. she's still small enough to do so. Yeah. And that, that, it puts her in a dangerous spot specifically because the horses are here now. And one of her favorite things is to go into the other pasture. And I would never forgive myself if she got into the pasture with Rita and something happened. Yeah. And, and so I'll just real set someone else's take the pigs to the J and L so you can see them every day. We don't have fencing over there to keep pigs no, in. All yeah. we have is barbed wire. All we have is barbed wire and we cannot afford to go by and fence that acres those acres y'all that just can't happen so i'm so sorry we will love pig trudy on those visits to the sanctuary i'll still take her treats along with the other pigs and we'll still love the cornholio and we'll love the nate all of these babies that jamie and i introduced to you donkey all dan, i'm a gene donkey still there. dan like, i'm this a gene isn't like this isn't goodbye or we're anything not, yeah, like that the sanctuary is it is just yeah. like we're trying to navigate pastures we're trying to be considerate of what's best for what animal. We're also trying to find balance and harmony in what we do. Safety. Uh, there's just a, there's a lot of thought that's been gone into this. And I promise you that we will continue to evaluate that depending upon what happens with rain, with Drop. pastures, yeah. with, with grass, you know, with births, you know, all those things, they all matter. And, I always say that this is an evolution and, and we are really blessed to be able to have options for these animals and it, it's not a burden and it is, it, it is really well thought out, you know, uh, strategic plans that we're making and we are able to make changes if we need to as well. And, and I'll add one thing to that. You said it's st st strategic plans Guys, don't forget that our videos are also, there's a lot more thought that goes into them than what maybe you realize. Because if you think about it, we don't video, let's just say Carl in every single video or the goats in every single video or the horse in every single video. What we try to do is, is mix and match our videos around so that in the course of a week, you've had a chance to see every animal. Why are you making that face? Are I'm you reading, reading comments? Comment, sorry. So in the course of a week, you will see a video with the pigs. I don't know what day you'll see it, no. but I'm there and you will see pigs in a video. You will see cornholio in a video. You will see 
me screaming to Nate, you need to shut your little pie hole or Rocky or whatever I'm going to do. You're going to see that in a video. Now, will you see that in every single video? Of course not. But you don't see any particular animal in every single video. We try to space those out and mix them and max them, mix them and match them the best that we can yeah. so that we keep the page dynamic and moving and not get it into a rut. That's just part of the management side on our end as far as what videos we release and when we release them. So Zig, uh, Ziggy is still there. Yes, he is. I would say we. Uh, it was funny because today, and then I would like to get your thoughts on this as well. Everyone, this is a great question to end it on, okay? Let's take the sanctuary only, and let's talk about some of the most entertaining animals that are there now so let's remind everybody of the animals that are there that are big entertainers so cornholio is a huge entertainer okay he's a little rough around the edges but he is an entertainer would you agree yes. he's a big personality help me if i forget anybody okay here, here they come ziggy that little emu he's an emu right is a heck of a personality angel that little <laughs> hey i'm angel i relate to angel I love Angel. Angel is a character and a half. Of course, you have Oki. Now, I think, this is my opinion, but Oki, in only the short time he's been on this earth, he's ten times the character of Ernie. He is. He is ten times the character of Ernie. Now, when I say character, I think about it like when I taught school of how developed the character is in a book. Some characters are very developed, and they're like a main character, other characters are kind of like, <laughs> what do you call them? They're not the main characters. They're just other characters. Supporting, supporting roles. roles. I am so sorry. But Ernie is a supporting role, even though he's been around for four years. Everybody's got and a role. Okie dokie is, he is front and center in every gosh darn video. Because he makes himself. Yes, he does make himself. And so we can go by all the pigs and we can go by all these different animals, but it's hard to picture which are the main characters of the I'm a survivor animals. But we can do that exact same thing at every property. You have main characters and some are going to be dogs. And don't think for a minute that a main character here is not that gosh darn cat. Uh, not Mr. Hank, not Aries, but Mabel. Who would have ever thought that Mabel, the only kitten that we could not rehome because nobody wanted Mabel nobody wanted Mabel has become one of the biggest and most lovable characters of this entire Longhorn Lester property and we love her y'all we love her to death god we love her so I don't guess I really ever ask an actual question but I just think about the different properties and think of who are the main characters and who are the supporting role characters and that happens, I think. And is that our fault? Is it really, is it our fault that some characters have bigger roles? No. Uh, because I we are the creators of the videos. I know we're creators, but, but some, I mean, whether we made it into a video or not, you know just as well as I do, out in the horse pasture, let's just take, for example. Rita! That Rita has <laughs> a bigger personality than the rest. It doesn't make it make her better or worse or anything like that. She just... It's the same way with your kids. Some have bigger personalities than the other. I, of course, only have one child, so I have to include others, or nieces, nephews, your kids, you know, that thing to be able to, like, compare. But they're all different, and that's how the animals are, too. And we don't pick that. Do you know that in literature, the same way that we run our videos, this is why, this is why our channel is so unique compared to all the other farm channels, is that we do... We are, in a way, like a, a, a movie. Picture this. In every single nonfiction, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In every single fictional piece of literature, there's always characters. There's always a problem and a solution. Think about it. Name, name a one where there's not. In every single fictional piece of literature, there are some things that are unique to all of them or, 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 or common with all of them. Characters, well, setting, 
problem, solution. Did you know? Did you realize that? And so think about every video that we've ever made. Uh oh, there's a problem. Uh oh, let's find a solution. You never realized that, have you? I don't think, think about I don't it. I think I always make my videos like that, but well, hold on, whoa, 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 because you don't, you do a lot of, you do a lot of non-fictional like how tos or this is my, right, this is my right, plan. Yeah. I, I live in a fantasy world, so all of my characters have little names and they have voices and they do funny things and they and also do mean things. Also do robot things. And there's they they do robot things. We have protagonists, we have antagonists, which, which means the good characters Are you really and the getting... bad characters. Are you really getting middle school on us right now, Mr. Morrow? <laughs> no, I just realized that how much my teaching has influenced my video creations oh. here in year number seven of us being video creators. And I'm still making movies based on what I would do when I made my students do I writing activities. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. Uh, and a lot of channels don't, don't, they do not take us serious because who could take a man serious by saying, pick Trudy. Oh no. Trudy's in the deep water. Let's save her. And we grab her snout and we pull her out of the deep water. <laughs> We've had some fun. Y'all we have so much fun. We love what we do and we're blessed to have y'all along this journey with us. Jamie, in this video, we've already gone over an hour. People are probably sick and tired of us. Y'all, uh, we're going to go uh, investigate what opened the door earlier because that has us both freaked out. Me, probably more so than Lester. He might have forgot already. Um, and we just want to say thank you so much for being a part of our days, our weeks, our months, our years, and our yesterdays and our todays and tomorrows. And we love you and are so grateful you allow us into your homes and phones and give us the greatest gift of all, which is your time. In any future video that I make, try to identify the problem and Sweet the solution. Baby Jesus, we love y'all. That's what I would ask my fabulous. students to do. Wait, you didn't say bye to Fiona. It's about, say, no one said bye to Fiona yet. Hey, sweetie. Everyone Good night, y'all. Come on, Chrissy. <laughs> Here comes everybody. Come on, babies. Oh, Lord. YouTube. Okay. Good night. <laughs>